In the contest between land managers and feral pigs, what's in this bucket will help tip the balance in favour of the good guys. We had from 80 pigs to 180 pigs, it's, it's just amazing. And then when we actually brought the toxin in, the sodium nitrite hog gone, we dropped the population by 85%. The stuff in the bucket, it's called hog gone, developed by the Invasive Animals CRC and Animal Control Technologies, part funded by MLA. Following field trials from Kangaroo Island to Queensland, it's almost ready for formal registration. And significantly, its active ingredient is not 1080, but sodium nitrite. One of the biggest reasons people don't get included in these coordinated control efforts is because they don't like 1080. They don't want to lose their working dogs and they don't like putting poisons out in the environment. So it's fantastic to work with the Invasive Animal CRC to trial these new toxins, um, sodium nitrite, that is more humane number one, so it's, it's fairer to the feral animals. And number two is that they're working on an antidote that can be given to working dogs. Hog Gone is one of a series of new feral animal products emerging from the CRC's research program. It's already borne fruit with the commercial release in 2008 of Pig Out, the first 1080 manufactured bait approved for pigs. Sheep and goat producer Helen Cathels chairs the CRC. Pig out is very exciting and it's already out there on the, on the shelves and so people are using that now and it's having a fantastic uh, impact. On the wild dog front, a new, more humane poison called PAP is headed for commercial release in 2013 under the brand name Dogabate. PAP came about because there were concerns about 1080. Uh, now we find that while we've come up with PAP, 1080 and PAP working together will actually be a sensational partnership. So they'll do the job better than just 1080 ever did on its own. And it too has an antidote to treat accidental poisoning of working dogs. Helen Cathell's family's got every reason to be keen for new technology to tackle dogs. They've been baiting them here in southern New South Wales for generations. Tim Cathell's place is just down the road from Helen. It was clear in the early 90s that the problem was beyond ad hoc baiting and trapping. About 20 years ago, we were having an issue with dogs coming in and killing young lambs. Uh, the lambs would still be alive when we'd find them the next morning, but they couldn't walk. And we would have to uh, put the animal down and we would skin it just to see what it was like. And every single bone in the body would be broken. But it's a very demoralising thing to turn up, find an animal that can't walk or is still just alive and you know that it's going to bleed to death or die some other form of death. Back then the locals got together and got help with some initial research to figure out where the common dog roots were and developed a plan. That plan is now entering its second decade. The key is leaving boundary fences out of the equation. We couldn't say they're your dogs or our dogs or anything like that. We'd say, sort of, we have an issue. How are we going to deal with it? What is the best way to go about it? And everybody agreed to the, the process that we started. We have pretty much got every land uh, agency, whether they're freehold, uh, like private land or public land. Uh, we have uh, state forest, we have private forest, we have national parks, we have Department of Lands, and we have all the landholders have basically signed an agreement that we will do a certain amount to make sure that the plan works. And it the, was the first of its kind in New South Wales, if not a, sort of around the world. And it's been very good to be part of that plan. And since it's been going, the dog issue has certainly subsided until this year. The difference this year, of course, is those seasonal conditions. So while the landscape-wide approach is essential, we come back to the need to give land managers more tricks up their sleeves. With the CRC showing a full pipeline of new products, life for Australia's wild dogs, foxes, rabbits, mice and feral pigs will get a little tougher in the next few years. For MLA managing red meat producers' research investment, that's justice and good business. There is the, the habitat destruction caused by things like pigs and rabbits. Uh, there is the more obvious uh, predation effect of things like wild dogs, uh, foxes, and to a lesser extent, maybe pigs. And then there's the, the emotional cost of seeing animals mutilated. 
That pipeline of new products justified the extension of the CRC when it came up for renewal this year. The Invasive Animal CRC has been very successful in all the projects that it's uh, been involved in, but there is still a lot of unfinished work. And it just made sense for the Invasive Animal CRC to be extended in order to successfully roll out the products uh, that have been completed and to continue and extend the work that is not yet quite finished. And so in the lab and in the field, the work goes on. We've got two fantastic trials that are coming up with the Invasive Animal CRC. One of those is um, the liquid concentrate. That's a liquid form of sodium nitrite that we can mix in with grain, just as we always have with 1080. And the other one's an econo bait. It's a smaller manufactured bait, the same as we've looked at today, and it goes into a pig-specific hopper. And the reason that hopper is so good is that um, it just targets feral pigs. Nothing else can access the door. No native wildlife, livestock, anything else can access it, only feral pigs. We need to improve that toolbox. We need to make sure that land managers have the best tools available at any time to be able to control feral animals because essentially the easier it is for land managers to do it, the more they, they will do it. <laughs>